Paul wrote in Galatians 5, in verse 13, saying, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve decided that they knew better than God. That rebellion then did something in us. God called it death and, and sin. We could no longer see God and we could no longer think clearly. Our DNA was infused with rebellious evil and that was passed down through the generations. In Romans 5, the Bible says, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men. And that creates a big problem for us. That problem is condemnation. You see, not only is sin judged, but the sinner is dead in his sins and trespasses. And the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The only way out of this mess is for God to transform our minds. He does that by dealing with our sin, paying for it on the cross, and then giving us new life by the Spirit of God coming into us to make a permanent abode in our hearts. And finally, for the first time, we have a choice of how to think. And go back into legalism and you're thinking of course in a carnal fleshly this age kind of way or think like the spirit and you think like God thinks besides believing in the true gospel the Christian gets to experience a sense of a freedom we realize that we do not have to keep the law in order to please God. And we realize that God's favor on us is not dependent on our obedience or our law keeping. God favors us because of what Christ did on the cross. Therefore, we're free. But our freedom means we must not cause anyone else to stumble. We must not abuse our freedom. We should not be so, so careless to do that. On the contrary, we are free to live and not to have to worry about how our behavior affects God's attitude toward us. That's because his attitude is one of love and acceptance. And it's guaranteed by the sacrifice of Christ. But this is not to say that he won't discipline us if we stray. After all, Hebrews 12, 6 tells us that God disciplines those whom he loves. We must be careful not to use our freedom to cause another to stumble. We have died ourselves to the law and, and the law has no jurisdiction over us. This means we are incredibly free. We're free to have fun, free not to be perfect, to, to not have to please our friends in church, to not have to pursue social acceptance. We're free to not have to pursue spiritual worthiness. We're free to rest in Christ and free to rest in our freedom. We can explore what it means to live life without having to be in fear. But what can be forgotten in this is that we are free to love God and we're free to love our neighbors. And in doing so, while we are free of the punishment of the law of Moses, we're now able to fulfill the law of Christ. to love God, 
to love others 